Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Force Strategy Gaming. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Zerg strategy. In this particular replay, our Zerg player is Sen. He's playing on the account Zerg King. I'm not sure off the top of my head if he's actually changed his account name or if he's just playing on a different account. I'm sure one of you lovely YouTube folks will let me know in the comments. And the opponent in this particular game is Select. So let's go right into Sen Vision. Now, what we're going to be looking at today is going for a macro heavy game. And something I want to note too is I know that a lot of players began to ask or a lot of YouTubers or fans of the videos began to ask for longer games and I've been really trying to come out with longer games for you so that you know you can get a better feel of the late game something that's kind of important to realize though is that a lot of the basic ideas and concepts that hold true in the early stages of your games are going to flow over into the later stages of the game the general ideas of making sure you're always using your hockeys making sure you're always scouting trying to have you know trying to have a good idea of what your opponent's doing when they expand making sure you're getting your upgrades a lot of these general concepts and ideas are basically just continued into the late game you you do what you were doing but you just do more of it essentially that's the basic idea but regardless Again, the point is that I'm going to be coming out with some longer games for you in general. Um, realize as well the longer games take more time to do, but that's neither here nor there. So, what are we looking at today? We're looking at a macro heavy game. We're looking at being able to respond to your opponent, getting good scouting, and the idea of using your scouting to know when you should ma be making offensive units or when you should be droning up. Droning up is a really crucial part of playing zerg knowing what to be using your larva on and the general concept uh basically that if, if you want to break it down to bare basics is you drone up when you feel that you're safe and you can work on your economy you make units when you feel like you need to defend or if you want to be offensive that's kind of the basics if you want to put it down to just the bare minimal so what are we looking at the very beginning here what are we seeing something i want to know is you may be questioning why the zerg player didn't 15 hatch a lot of zerg players have been 15 hatching for quite some time what's the difference now what's going on well against Terran um, we're seeing less and less Zerg players go for a fast expansion because the threat of an early game to barracks push it can be very damaging and it can be very difficult to defend so because of that we're gonna we're, we're seeing a lot of Zerg players open up with one base play and then getting their expansion once they feel safe and they know that a two racks push isn't coming and they're not gonna lose to it also obviously on one base play it's much easier to defense defend against that two racks push so Seeing the opening of a one base play, the specific build order that we did see here from Sen was a 13 extractor followed by a 14 pool. Um, and then at, once that pool came up at 16 supply, we saw that queen come down. And then very shortly, we're going to be seeing that hatchery. So there it is. Uh, something else I want to make note of is this is how I suggest to all Zerg players opening up the game after your spawning pulls up it's strongly suggested that you get two to four zerglings the purpose is for scouting it's going to allow you to grab zelnaga towers it's going to allow you to push into your opponent's base now we can see here select doing an excellent job of microing his marines if your Terran opponent does a good job of microing and, and can do that stop move, stop move attack, you're going to lose a lot of your zerglings in that early push so whether or not you want to bring all four in it's up to you Obviously, the more you bring in, the more you're the more you're going to be able to push into his base, and the more you're going to see. Uh, we still did get uh, Sen still did get what he needed from this, though he saw that second building. That is the purpose of the initial scout, and we're going to want to do a secondary scout as well to see what attachments are going to be coming on that factory, and also looking for that third building. Again, three buildings per one base is essentially what a Terran player can afford with attachments. So now that that metabolic boost is up, going to be moving in that Zergling, looking for that attachment, and there it is. Seeing that reactor go down knowing now that we can expect early hellions gonna be getting a roach warrant as well not planning on coming out with a ton of roaches but the idea here is that we're going to get it just in case, in case it's needed. And if we do find that roaches are going to be beneficial, then we'll start working on the roach production. We'll start pumping out a bunch. You can already see the scouting taking place, sending overlords outside of your opponent's base. This is really key. You're going to see any drops coming. You're going to see any banshee coming, you know, and that being able, having that advanced warning is what you want to be able to do. It's, it's basically what's going to allow you to properly prepare. Now that this expansion is finally up, you're seeing a transfer of drones that took place. Um, I suggest grabbing at least a, a decent amount you know six to eight drones maybe even pulling half of the drones off the line you will see a lot of players literally take half of their drones bring them to their expansion to help evenly distrib uh, distribute the amount of mining that takes place at both bases second queen up as well you obviously want that to inject larva on both hatcheries uh, that's the goal there but something important to realize here is that we're seeing 
mostly drone production. Those roaches are coming out because of those, the threat of those early hellions. Just getting about two to three is going to be enough. When it comes to actually using zerglings, however, you can effectively do it if you make sure they're not clumped up and you can get a good surround on the hellions. If you manage to do that, you can still do pretty well, fairly well, against any hellion push that's going to be coming just with the zerglings. But again, important to note, everything thus far for the most part not a lot of offensive units it's pretty much been working on the macro working on your economy and that's the idea that's essentially what you want to do moving in with these double overlord scouts sacrificing yes but we want to see what those additional billings are so that is why you're seeing this take place the real big thing at this point that sen's probably worried about is the possibility of a cloaked banshee so that's why that he's being checked also getting that evolution chamber is going to allow him to not only get upgrades but get those spore crawlers so he does have that cloak detection that plus the queen's will do a pretty good job of defending against any cloak banshees. You can see three queens down here, uh, two for inject larva on the two hatcheries, one of them for spreading creep, and also the third one is gonna be for when an expansion finally comes up and we should be dropping that somewhat shortly. But again, I really wanna note, I really wanna point out the fact that in this game, Sen has pretty much exclusively been working on the economy. Getting a few combat units here, these zerglings here, do have a couple roaches out as well, but for the most part, just working on economy. And that's really, the goal. If you can do that, if you can play a reactionary playstyle, only get units when you want to defend, when you feel like you need to defend a push, or when you feel like you want to be aggressive, then you're going to be all set. Now, seeing a push come out from select, getting those zerglings in preparation for that, um, that's going to be how you want to play the game. Continue to get the upgrades, continue to macro up, get those units when you feel like you need to defend, but until then, keep doing your macro. Now, something really important that I want to note here, I'm going to pause the game. I've obviously looked at this before. That's why I know that that's why I know to pick this for a strategy video. But what I want to know is during your games, you want to be able to, especially the early stages of the game, you want to be able to size up your opponent's army in comparison to yours and figure out if you're going to win or lose the fight. Now, in this particular position with the amount of Zerglings, knowing the stim packs down, knowing with all these Hellions, Sen is fairly sure that his Zerglings are not enough to take out this force. And as a result, what you're going to see is drones be pulled up to help distract fire and to help do some additional damage. Now that's important and I wanted to make note of it because some players, when they see a push like this coming and they lose nearly all of their Zerglings, rather than using drones to assist, rather than using drones to do additional damage and to distract fire, they'll just let their drones continue to mine and they're going to lose all their zerglings, and then they're going to let the units start to attack their base, and they won't do anything. Their drones will be sitting here, still mining. Drones, while primarily for mining, do not need to be solely used for that purpose. If you see a push coming, you know you're outnumbered, you know you're going to lose an engagement, and you feel like you know, you're not going to be able to properly defend it, then pull up some workers. They do five damage a hit. It's not the greatest, but it's not terrible. They have a very slow attack speed, yeah. But they do two things. They add additional damage, and on top of that, they add distracting fire. You, what, what you did see, I think they've healed up by this point, but some of those drones got hit. There was about five or six of those drones that got hit from uh, attacks from the opposing player. Now that's important to realize because those shots, those fires, are shots that we're not taking at your zerglings. So that's preventing your zerglings from dying. It's, it's basically like throwing a meat shield in front of your zerglings. Um, and that's what you want to do. And something else I want to note, using the speed and mobility of zerg to get a good scout, to get a good advantage of seeing what your opponent's doing. You can see here having a zergling at this third expansion, having zerglings over here and over here. You're going to be well aware of any expansion that comes down. And when it does, you can punish your opponent for expanding, you know, sending your zerglings, use their speed. Also getting some banelings at this point. We did have a banelings nest go down, teching up to a layer, continuing to work on the macro, continuing to get upgrades, getting those units when we feel like we need them. I've said it before. I'll say it probably a couple times again before the end of this video, but it's important because it's a good play style. It's a good way to play Zerg. Macro up, get the units when you need them get all your upgrades and scout your opponent, figure out what they're doing. See two Zerglings right here are gonna move in, try to get a good idea of what the unit composition is. And there we go, seeing Marine Marauder tank. So we know that just going speeding Baneling is gonna do pretty well. Now something else I wanna talk about is engagements. Um, you know, in the game, Speedling, Baneling, they're very, you know, they're very mobile, they can be very strong units, but overall they're relatively fragile compared to other units. A line of siege tanks and a big ball of Marines and Marauders 
with stim pack and upgrades, it's going to be very hard for Zerglings, to, unless you completely outmass them and completely outnumber them, it's going to be very hard for Zerglings to do very well against that. So you want to be able to surround. The whole idea of using these small units is to get around your opponent, to wrap around your opponent. So when fights occur, it's a good idea to spread up your units into multiple groups, two or three groups. Um, and then when they are in a position where you feel safe, converge on them from multiple angles. That's going to, you know... It, if Siege Tank Fire gets laid down, it'll be hitting one group instead of all of your group, especially when you move in from multiple angles. And it's also going to allow you to get that surround quicker, which means you're going to start doing more damage quicker as well. Here's another expansion going down for Sen. Again, feeling fairly safe. Not a lot of harassment has been coming from his Terran opponent select. So he's just going to continue to expand. I mean, why not? You know, if, you're, if your opponent isn't harassing you, if they're not giving you a hard time, if they're not dropping in your base or putting Banshees in the back of your base, hurting your economy, there's nothing preventing you from expanding, so do it. Expanding is very important as Zerg. It's important as every race to get that extra economy, but as Zerg especially for that extra larva. Something else I want to take note of is you can see here Sen coming down with this additional hatchery. Now, that's important to realize as well. A lot of Zerg players in many games really start to pile up on minerals and become Vespian starved. If that's the case, if you're in a game where you have a thousand plus minerals and you only have like 100 or 200 Vespian, you need to do one of two things. You need to expand again so that you can get additional extractors out to gather some more Vespian, or you need to come out with another hatchery or two. Getting that extra larva is going to allow you um, to use more of your minerals, basically. That's the general idea. Because of Zelnaga Towers, because of scouting, seeing this push coming. So now, now with this awareness, now with this knowledge, Sen is going to do what he can to prepare. And we're going to see two things here. We're going to see we're going to see being able to surround your opponent effectively, uh, converge on them, and do damage. We're also going to see the effectiveness of counterattacks, and this is something I want to talk about as well. Uh, the general idea here is that if you're getting pushed out against uh, Terran, if a Terran opponent's pushing out against you, what don't you want to do? Well, you don't want to walk into siege tanks. Walking into siege fire is very bad, very dangerous. You're going to lose a lot of your units, especially if the bulk of your army consists of speedlings and banelings. You're going to lose a lot of your units. So instead of walking up into them, why don't you just circumvent them? Why not run around? Why not run to their base? Oh, that's a great idea. It is a great idea. Lots of Zerg players do it because it's effective. You have the speed in this unit. You have the mobility in this unit. Unless you feel like you are in immediate danger, like that you are going to lose the game if you don't help defend, if you feel that they're not in that position where you're going to lose the game very quickly, then counterattack. Push out with your units. Go into their base. Hit their expansions. Do as much damage as possible. This is going to do one of two things. It's going to force them to fully engage. Or, the other thing that it's going to do is it's going to force them to pull back to help defend. If they pull back to help defend, by the time they get back into their base, they'll probably have done so much damage that they're in a lot of trouble. Now we can see back here, they're pushing forward. That was the decision here in this particular game. Look at the effect that the speed is. Absolutely obliterating nearly all of his army. And then back here in the base, you can see the amount of damage that the speedlings and banelings have done over here. Now, a few players may question a couple of things. One of which is, well, why did the Terran player have so little? Why did us as a Zerg player have so much more than the Terran player did? The reason is because of the macro. In this particular game, Sen was able to expand pretty much nonstop with very little harass from his Terran opponent. Didn't see a lot of drops. There was this one drop that took place over here. Didn't see very much Banshee harass. If your Terran opponent leaves you alone and lets you macro up like this, then you're going to be at a huge advantage. You're going to have that stronger economy. You're going to be able to afford a lot more upgrades. You can see upgrades have been pretty much continuous. Uh, that, that speed upgrade for the Banelings, just about to come in with that uh, extra damage upgrade for the Zerglings as well, the speed attack upgrade, rather. Um, and if this happens, if your Terran opponent leaves you alone, take full advantage of it, get those expansions, you're going to have a larger army. If you have two or three more bases than your opponent, it's literally impossible for them to have a bigger army than you. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Mathematically, it doesn't add up. You have a stronger economy, you can afford more units, you can afford more upgrades, you're going to be in a better position. So I'm just going to go over that beginning build order real quick, though, before we finish things up here. Uh, you did see a 13 extractor and 14 pool. Again, I spoke on to that because of the fact that two racks pushes have become pretty popular as Terran against Zerg, it makes it very difficult to defend in early expansion. So we're seeing a lot of Zerg players open up with one base play. 16 supply, saw that first queen come out in 19 supplies when metabolic boost got researched. 21 supply, that expansion finally coming down. 22 supply, second queen coming out. 28 supply, getting that roach roarn. The idea here is preparation. Uh, we saw hellions were coming, so being able to deal with those hellions. Also, if a marine heavy army was coming from the opponent, getting a few more roaches and a little less zerglings may be a good idea. 
51 supply coming out with a layer and then 58 supply coming out with the banelings nest. Now I'm going to stop there because the idea is from this point, that's kind of the basic, that's the beginnings. From that point, continuing to macro up, continuing to drone up, working on expansions, getting upgrades, and then getting those additional buildings. We got that infestation pit that allows you to get the hive for additional upgrades uh, for your zerglings as well. Um, also allowing you to tech up to higher tech because you want to go into ultras, especially when you're on four or five bases, you can easily afford it at that point. So once again, guys, this has been Force from Force Strategy Gaming. If you guys like our videos and you like what's going on here, make sure you do go ahead and subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a ton, so please do so if you enjoy our content. As always, guys, keep watching and keep owning. With that, uh, that's going to put our opponent at quite the disadvantage. We're going we're to be moving out here, and you're going to see that they're going to lack equal forces because Delphi did go for drones, and, and going for roaches yourself, again, it's going to put you in a really good spot. Pushing forward, roaches do a great job against queens. In fact, roaches early game in this matchup do a great job against anything your Zerg opponent could have. You obviously want to try to stay away from the spine crawler.